today I've been peer pressured into doing a video about Canada. He caved. It's not that I didn't want to do a video about Canada, it's the fact that basically I have a 2% viewership in Canada, so there's a good chance this video is going to be watched by like three people. Shout out to Curtis, Soraya and Galen. Is there anyone alive out there? Before I get into the video, do me a favour and share it with a Canadian that you know. Tell them otherwise, every time they go somewhere outside of their own country, they're going to be mistaken for an American, and that would be sad, so they should subscribe or they'll the full privy to that curse. Canada is actually nothing like America, much like Ireland is nothing like Britain and the UK. I went to Calgary, Canada when I was in school and I went with my school choir and we got to appear on Canadian television for St. Patrick's Day and for it we learned the Canadian national anthem and we also sang the Irish national anthem. It was a really fun trip, I got to stay with a Canadian family for a week, it was strange, it was like you were adopted by them. And there definitely were some huge cultural differences, so without any further ado, what is ado? Let's Let's get into it. Coming in at number 10, this list would not be possible without noting how cute the accent is. At all times when they say anything, it can be a threatening thing or it can be a nasty thing and it's perfectly okay because their accent is just freaking adorable. A lot of people say the Canadians are exceptionally polite but I happen to think a big part of this is down to the fact that their accent is just adorable. So cute. I challenge you to feel threatened by this gorgeous accent. There's a well-known thing around the world the Canadians say A at the end of everything and I actually happened to find that they didn't say A at the end of everything but it's the spirit of the A that you feel in their sentence. It's just a beautiful melodic accent and it's lovely. The next thing that I noticed is that they are completely immune to weather. They are not bothered whether it's hot or cold. Now in Calgary it was particularly cold but did this stop people from wearing t-shirts? No. In Ireland if there was even a dribble of snow you will find the entire country shuts down, roads will be cordoned off, people will stop going to school and work, it's just mayhem because we are not prepared, we are not prepared for the cold weather. Canadians happen to have an entire infrastructure in place whereby if there's a snowstorm it's just basically a piece of piss, I can't think of a better way to say it, it just is, they just take it really handy. I remember we would get up really early in the morning because we had like a big itinerary to follow and there would be people out shoveling each other's driveways because they're sound like that, they just shovel each other's driveways. Some people even had driveways that de-iced themselves which was pretty cool and all the roads and everything was totally prepared for that stuff. I also noticed that while they had central heating it wasn't really stifling central heating so I don't know what that was about, did they have a different kind of central heating to us? Not sure, it was just pleasant. And while us Irish schoolgirls were wrapped up warm in our scarves and our gloves, all the Canadian schoolgirls were just walking around in little mini skirts and t-shirts like it was nothing to them. Which brings me to my next point. Canadian teenagers are secret naughty. When I was in this household, the parents had very strict rules. There was definitely no drinking under their roof and they basically made sure there was a curfew and the children even got grounded just like in real movies that I had seen. Welcome to real life. But I did notice that while their daughter left the house in one outfit in the morning, jeans and a jumper, she would carry out her school day in a little mini skirt and t-shirt and boots and return home later in her jeans and jumper. Hmm. When we were away from the household, I also got chatting to a lot of teenagers there and they agreed that when they had parties, they would all drink. But their parents were completely oblivious to this fact. And oh my God, Canadians drank. The next thing is milk in bags. Yes, it's one that people talk about as something of a myth, but it is an actual thing that happens. When Canadians are going to the shop, do they say they're gonna go get a bag of milk? That's my biggest question in this whole thing. So yes, they buy this bag of milk and inside the bag of milk there are four little bags of milk and then they take out the bag of milk, little one, and they pour it into like a jug or a container thing that they have for milk, which just adds a whole level of work to having milk and putting milk in an extra thing and it gives me another thing that I have to do with my day so it just doesn't seem like the most practical thing but they've been doing it for so long there probably is a good reason for it so if you know the good reason for it let me know below in comments. What's that about? Why do you do it Canada? The next thing is yes people talk about Canadians being polite but the thing I noticed was how polite they are when they drive. Canadians give way to people all the time, they stop, they let people cross the road, it's just it's just a really lovely environment to be in a car and maybe I would be driving now if I lived in Canada. I have come to know that the orange light means go faster but in Canada no, orange light means slow down and stop. They're pretty happy to do it and they're very relaxed with their time, there's no speeding around 
time. It's just a really chill place to be a driver. And I don't know any percentages or anything like that, but I wouldn't be surprised if road deaths are significantly lower there because people are just very pleasant when they're driving. The next thing, and I did want to cite specific examples of Canadians being lovely, was the fact that complete strangers will say hi to you in the street. To the point that if you are walking along the street and somebody else is walking along the street and you don't say hi, it's odd. In Ireland, we have a thing where if you're driving along a country road, you'll give a person the odd wave. And in Canada, it's that way, but amplified and multiplied by a gajillion, because there's a lot more people there. When I came home and started just saying hi to people out of habit, people looked at me like I had a million heads. Especially in Dublin, where people just don't do this. And it wasn't just people who worked in shops, like in LA, because they want your commission. They just said hi to you all the live long day, to the point that I wondered, was I giving the right answer to hi back? Hi, hi, how are you? It didn't seem to go as far as a how are you. It was just generally a smile and a hi. I kind of liked it, but also it was strange. The next thing worth noting is like almost eerie loveliness. It's quiet, yeah. Too quiet. Canada is so clean, or at least the parts that I went to. I didn't actually see road cleaning trucks or people cleaning up the streets or anything, but I did notice that everybody puts their rubbish in the bin. Sorry, their trash in a can. And indeed, the footpaths themselves were extremely clean. I didn't see gum on the ground and blobs of black dirt. They were just all very clean, it felt very fresh and good. And I think that's because Canada is kind of a self-regulating society in a lot of ways. It had me wondering, if I were to just throw something on the ground, would a Canadian come over to me and tell me to pick it up? Or would they just pick it up for me? That would be an interesting social experiment that somebody should do in Canada. The next odd thing that I noticed in Canada is that they watch British television. There's a popular soap in the UK called Coronation Street and we also watch it in Ireland. My clothes were so muddy, I couldn't get stains out. But Canadians seem to watch it too. They were watching it every evening in the house that I went into. And it just really seems odd and random to me that this strange little soap opera is being watched a bajillion miles away. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the actual amount of miles. I'm gonna guess it's less than a bajillion. I guess they watch it with the same cultural fascination that we would watch TV novellas here. It's so alien to them, but also kind of familiar in a way. It wasn't just Coronation Street. There were other British TV shows too. But I don't know. I'm not Canadian. Let me know below in comments what you think. If you are Canadian, why do you watch British television shows? The next strange thing I noticed is that Canadian water is not only drinkable out of the tap, but also freaking delicious. It's juicy and it doesn't taste like fluoride and it doesn't taste stale. A lot of Canadian people have filters on their tops, but I really don't think there's any need because it's just nom nom nommy. Nom 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 nom, that's gonna be me in like a minute. I would be a person who's inclined to reach for a fizzy cola before I would reach for water, but in Canada, it's just so yum that I found myself just drinking a bucket loads of water. Imagine the benefits for your hair and skin. But yeah, I wonder what the bottled water industry is doing like financially over in Canada because they just don't need it. Do people still drink bottled water because they can? Is that the power of marketing? And the number one weird thing that I noticed when I visited Canada was how much they say sorry. And the reason this was weird to me is because Irish people also say sorry all the time. Instead of excuse me, we say sorry. And it's to the point that the other day I was walking down the street and I came in contact with a woman and I said sorry and she just, she said nothing. And it really upset me because her response should have also been sorry, even though neither one of us were sorry. That's just protocol. Manners. And in Canada, they also say sorry all the time, all the live long day. And when Irish people meet Canadian people, it's just a whole sorry fest. In Canada, they actually have an act in the courts called the Apology Act, where you can apologize to somebody and it marks an act of compassion rather than a sign of guilt. And I think that's nice and appropriate. But it leads me to wonder if Canadian and Irish people were in contact more, would we get anything done or would we just spend all the live long day apologizing to each other? I don't know. That's it for today's video, which goes out to the Karmic Goals crew over on Patreon. These guys are some of the soundest people and the people who always have the answers to everything, like why there's been no weird Wednesday for a while. Feel free to engage with one another in the comments in a respectful way and I will be back on Friday with more. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing on Friday yet. Let's see what happens, bye. I went to Canada, Calgary. So I, I went to Calgary as people talk about k but amplified, multiplied, multiplied. Let me know, no thing I noticed, it.
What is going on with my voice today? The next strange. Where have you been? Over on the floor, eating kibble? Sleeping? Why haven't you been on camera for a while? People are missing you. 